In the realm of golfing legends, Tom Watson shines as a beacon of skill and perseverance. From his strategic approach to his adaptability, Watson consistently displayed a level of skill and determination that set him apart from the rest. This is the story of the unmatched brilliance of Tom Watson. Thomas Watson had an impressive and successful career in golf, making him one of the all-time greats. But surprisingly, his dream of athletic stardom wasn't to be on the green, at least not if he had it his way. Dreaming of Diamond, the early years of a golf legend. Thomas Sturgis Watson, born on September 4, 1949, hails from Kansas City, Missouri, and his journey into the world of golf was ignited by his father, Ray. Thomas's father, Ray, had an unwavering passion for golf, and he passed that love down to young Thomas. But for Thomas, his heart was set on baseball. That's right, an eventual golfing legend used to have other dreams outside of the green. In fact, by the time he was eight years old, Thomas had joined a Kansas-based baseball team called the Hen House Chicks. To be fair, he did show promise in pitching and running, but his hitting skills were quite questionable. The turning point came when he was dealt a blow at nine years old, failing to make the Little League baseball team. That's when Thomas decided to give competitive golf a shot. He started his journey at the Kansas City Junior Medal Play, facing the challenges of a par 60 course. Over time, his golf skills began to develop and improve, and at age 14, he won the Kansas City Men's Match Play, inspiring a more profound passion for the game. After all, golf seemed to be dealing him more favors than baseball did. A year later, he received an exciting phone call from a charity organization to play in an exhibition match alongside his idol, Arnold Palmer. And from there, he never looked back. With the guidance of his mentor, Stan Thursk, at the Kansas City Country Club, Thomas Watson would become a golf prodigy, winning an impressive four Missouri State Amateur Championships in 1967, 1968, 1970, and 1971, playing for the Pembroke Country Day School. He actually cheated on golf again during his days at Stanford University by dabbling in a bit of table tennis, but he always found his happiest place to be on the course. What started as a backup plan eventually became an iconic career, but not without its challenges. Ascent to golfing stardom. In the 1970s and 1980s, Watson was a dominant force in golf, but had a rough start. Thomas joined the PGA Tour in 1971, but it wasn't until 1973 at the St. Louis tournament held at the Norwood Hills Country Club where Thomas crossed paths with Bruce Edwards, who would become his trusted caddy and golfing companion for many years to come. One of Watson's most important encounters during his early years as a golf pro came a year later. It was at the U.S. Open, and Watson had the lead after 54 holes, only to dip in form during the final round. Disappointed, he retreated to the locker room, and it was there he met iconic golfer-turned-broadcaster Byron Nelson, who had recognized Watson's potential earlier. Nelson encouraged an up-and-coming Tom, which turned out to be the beginning of a relationship that would dominate world golf. The two teamed up with Nelson, providing expert advice on swing mechanics and course strategy, and in no time, Watson's game reached new heights. By 1975, he had won his first major at the Open Championship in Britain, a showdown against Jack Newton that ended in a gripping playoff. Watson's win at the Open Championship was truly historical, making him one of only four players since World War II to win the Open Championship on their debut, joining the ranks of Ben Hogan, Tony Lima, and Ben Curtis. The 1975 Open champion is Tom Watson. Two men. He was just getting warmed up though, and wasn't going to stop at just one major. Just a couple of years later, in 1977, Watson played against the legendary Jack Nicholas at the Masters. On the 17th green, tied with Nicholas, Watson sank an incredible 20-foot birdie putt to take the lead. With a solid par on the 18th, he secured the prestigious green jacket and his second major championship. Watson and Nicholas had one of the most thrilling rivalries in the world of golf, and their saga continued at the 1977 Open Championship in Scotland, where Watson and Nicholas battled it out. Tied after the second and third rounds, they both shot incredible scores of 65 in the third round to pull ahead of the competition. In the final round, they traded powerful shots, but Watson stayed calm under pressure 
and his birdie on the 18th hole secured the championship victory and set a record score of 268, 12 under par. Driving the action there, but he has played these two holes so many times. How about Watson's shot? Winning these events are great achievements on their own, but doing it in the style Tom did against arguably the game's greatest ever player just shows the level this man was on. Find Tom Watson's story exciting? Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more intriguing stories from the world of golf. Tom Watson's journey through the early 70s was a roller coaster, but that wasn't the end. There were more difficult years ahead. Facing Adversity Augusta and a String of Disappointments In 1978, as the defending Masters champion, Watson needed just a par on the 18th hole of his final round to match Gary Player's remarkable 72-hole performance, with Player shooting a record-tying 64. Watson's approach shot on the 18th veered into the gallery, and he missed a crucial 10-foot par putt that would have forced a playoff. He settled for a tie for second place at Augusta, just one stroke behind Gary Player. Sure, 1978 brought him five PGA Tour victories, but it also held one of the most significant disappointments of his career at the PGA Championship at Oakmont, where he squandered a five-shot lead after 54 holes, ultimately losing in a three-way sudden-death playoff. The following year, in 1979, Watson continued to shine with another five PGA Tour wins, including a commanding victory in the Sea Pines Heritage Classic, where he set a tournament record of 14 under par 270. However, the Masters once again proved elusive as he lost in a three-way sudden-death playoff. Finally, in 1981, he got his second and final Masters win. But as the years rolled on, Watson faced ups and downs. After his runner-up finish in the 1984 British Open, he endured a three-year dry spell until he secured a victory at the 1987 Nabisco Championship. Watson's decline in form during this period even led him to missing out on a spot in the 1985 U.S. Ryder Cup team. In the 1986 Hawaiian Open, Watson held the third-round lead aimed to end his winless streak, but stumbled on the final holes, settling for a tie for third place. In the 1987 U.S. Open, he had a chance to secure his ninth major championship, but he narrowly lost by a single stroke. Despite struggles on the green in the late 1980s, Watson's tee to green game showed signs of improvement. He had some close calls in tournaments, such as finishing second at the 1988 NEC World Series of Golf, where he missed a three-foot putt to cost him victory. But that didn't tear him down. In 1989, Watson remained in contention during the Open Championship at Royal Troon, but ultimately finished in fourth place, just two strokes outside the playoff between Mark Kalkovecchia, Wayne Grady, and Greg Norman. You know how the saying goes, though, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Best believe Tom Watson was one of the toughest the game has ever seen, and he eventually got going, riding into the sunset. Back to the top, the grand finale to Watson's career. At the 1991 Masters Tournament, Watson stood on the 18th tee in the final round at Augusta with a share of the lead. But in a twist of fate, he carded a double bogey six, Despite this stumble, Watson strutted away with a tie for third place, just two strokes shy of the victorious Ian Woosnam. Can you believe it? This was Watson's 15th consecutive top 20 finish at the Masters, a streak that would even make the most seasoned golfers green with envy. Fast forward to 1994, when the Open Championship returned to Turnberry, the very stage where Watson had triumphed in 1977. Watson, with the wisdom of age, philosophized. Sometimes you lose your desire through the years. Any golfer goes through that. When you play golf for a living, like anything in your life, you are never going to be constantly at the top. While he didn't grab the Claret Jug that year, he showed the world he still had some golfing magic left in his bag, finishing tied for 11th. The late 1990s brought the Watson Renaissance when he snatched victory at the Memorial Tournament in 1996, proving that age was just a number. In 1997, Watson decided to conquer new frontiers by winning the Japan Golf Tour's Dunlop Phoenix Tournament for the second time. It was the fourth of his four victories in the land of the rising sun. He was becoming a global golfing legend. And in 1998, at the ripe age of 48, Watson added another gem to his crown by clinching his 39th PGA Tour win at the MasterCard Colonial. Now, brace yourselves for the ultimate golfing tale. 
In the 2003 US Open, Watson, at the sprightly age of 53, did the unthinkable. He shared the opening round lead with a stunning 65. And who was by his side? None other than his longtime caddy and confidant, Bruce Edwards. The catch? Bruce had been battling Lou Gehrig's disease, but Watson was on a mission. Together, they raised awareness and funds to combat this dreadful disease until Edwards passed away in April 2004. Despite no longer competing in the full Masters, Watson would go on to win the Masters Tournament Par 3 contest in 2018 at the ripe old age of 68. Even age couldn't hold him down in what was an epic victory as he became the oldest winner of this prestigious event. But every golfing tale eventually finds its last chapter. In July 2019, Watson retired and bid adieu to competitive golf on British soil as he teed off for the final time at the Senior British Open. And there you have it, the journey of Tom Watson, a golfing legend who made golfing history one unforgettable swing at a time. If you enjoyed this video about the unmatched brilliance of Tom Watson, check out the video on the screen now or the one we posted below because we're sure you'll like that one too. Let us know in the comments if there's another golfer whose journey you'd like us to cover. See you there!